Tank crews are given their assignments. Load the main gun! Roger! Gonna hit him with the main gun! God damn, this is so cool! <laughs> oh, well, hello there, everybody! Woo! You know... <coughs> Shit. <laughs> so oh, hey, everybody! You know the Eastern Front gets most of the love in World War II tank battles, and that's not without good reason. The Western Front wasn't such a target-rich environment like the Russia, <laughs> like the Russia. Speaking of, have you heard of Lafayette G. Pool? Well, the Germans did in World War II. With 258 APCs destroyed, 12 tank kills, and 250 enemy captured, and an estimate of 1,000 enemy KIA, Pool and his tank crew aboard their tank in the mood inspired both fear and fury, by which I mean the movie, of course, Fury. Lafayette was born in Odom, Texas in 1919. This son of Texas was drafted into the United States Army in 1941. Even by the standards of the day, he was noted by his peers as being a very aggressive sergeant. Sounds like my kind of guy. And he wasn't about to let himself be put behind a desk. So when he was offered a commission, he politely declined, preferring to stay in a combat role. So he was promoted to staff sergeant and deployed to Europe. He landed with his unit in Normandy in June of 1944 as a tank commander of an M4 Sherman. Poole would have two tanks destroyed under his command. Once by Panzerfaust, and another in a tank-to-tank -tank duel. But this tough-as-nails son of a gun just got another Sherman, painted in the mood on the side of it, and kept pushing on. In his very first engagement, his tank, in the mood, was responsible for the destruction of over 70 German soldiers, and three armored vehicles, no less. He quickly became known as the Texas Tanker. On one occasion, Knight had overtaken the tank platoon, Sergeant Poole was about to call it a day. As he opened his mouth to order, Driver Halt! The shape of a 40 millimeter dual purpose AA gun emplacement materialized less than 50 feet from their position. He shouted with no warning, Gunner, fire! His gunner instantly responded, putting a round directly through the enemy gun. That's Hedro Combat for you. Turn a corner and there could be anything waiting for you. I think you veterans of Afghanistan can appreciate the suck fest I'm describing. <laughs> In another encounter, in the late afternoon some days later, Poole's platoon was skirting south of the town Colombier, France. France. France! When a German Panther rolled directly in front of the lead tank. It quickly got off two rounds, but the nervous enemy gunner missed both times. Before a third projectile could fly from the long, deadly-looking 75mm barrel, Poole's gun barked and ripped the Panther turret from the hull. <laughs> As it turned out, they had driven into an armored hornet's nest. Firing began at once, and the enemy seemed to come from everywhere. Colonel Richardson, commander of the 32nd Regiment, could hear the orders and the swearing from the crews as they frantically tried to adjust the unforeseen encounter. By dark, it was all over. Poole and In the Mood had taken out two enemy tanks and at least two armored cars. Poole was twice recommended for the Congressional Medal of Honor. but. An Infantry Mentality Army Recommendation Board decided that, since tanks were crew-served weapons, he did not deserve the medal. But Poole was awarded other major Army medals, including the Distinguished Service Cross, the Legion of Merit, the Silver Star, and the Purple Heart. He also received the Belgium Forger. I don't know, some French foreign bullshit. I'm not really familiar with it. And I don't care because it's not American. In the last battle on September 19, 1944, near Stolberg, Germany, Poole and his crew were ambushed by a panther. A big one. It was ferocious. It'd tear your fucking eyes out. <laughs> Their tank was badly damaged right away, and the panther hit him for a second time. 
The tank, having stopped at the edge of a ditch, was tipped over and Poole was thrown out of the commander's hatch. Severely wounded but fully conscious, he was rushed to a medical unit but would eventually lose a leg. He was angry about having to leave the war way too soon, he later said. And he told Stars and Stripes reporter, I was just getting started. Given a prosthesis, he returned to active duty in 1948 and served until 1960, retiring as a chief warden officer, second class. He died in 1991, aged at 71, and is buried at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery in San Antonio, Texas. Join us next time when we talk about a war that doesn't get as much attention as it should, and about a guy who looked like he should have been working in a library, but killed so many North Koreans during the Korean War, he should have been listed as a second cause of death for the fucking DMZ. <laughs> he should have been listed as a second cause of death north of the DMZ. Oh, that's right behind famines caused by communist mismanagement. Until next time. <laughs>